yo 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 what's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel this is going to be my first official video here for mining simulator 2. now this is actually the sequel to the first mining simulator coming to you from the creators of bubblegum simulator bubble tower defense and there is another game that Rumble Studios has released. I can't remember exactly what that other game is. But anyway, they are delivering more content. So I figured I might as well come in here and join the fun. But before I get into the contents of this video, be sure to smash the like button. Hit me up in the comment section. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel right now if you guys are new we are pushing for 300 subscribers thank you to all that is already subscribed to the channel and thank you to all of those new people that are coming here subscribing to the channel join the fun join the excitement and i invite you guys into my circle so here's the situation with mining simulator 2 i'm just now starting out and already you pro subscribers are challenging me telling me i'm a noob you're trash at this game you suck why did you join my server and i was just like okay okay let's relax let's not forget your boy was out for about a month and a half with no access to roblox no access to social media no access to anything because the desktop pc that i had was trying to switch over to windows 11. it was currently on windows 10 s and it was trying to upgrade itself and it ended up hurting itself and crashing. I had a black screen. First it was blue and then it went black and then it just never came back on. So, you know, money was tight. Not going to lie to you guys. You know that I always keep things honest with you. I don't have a secondary job. I chose YouTube to do it full time because I can't see myself in a nine to five situation. And also... I'm in a current situation where I can't even actually leave the house. I'm living with my sister, so I'm constantly watching her children while she is out and about working. You know what I mean? So me being perfectly honest with you guys, yes, this is the reason as to why most of the videos, most of the live streams, you hear a bunch of kids in the background because that is almost like the secondary job that I have, you know, babysitting. And yeah, it sounds horrible. I need to get my own place and I'm working on all of that stuff. But anyway, there's no excuse as to why I'm not already a pro in this game. So I'm going to be grinding here. We got a little bit of a private server access here, courtesy of 5k. So huge shout outs to him. Um, we also have Drake Craft in here grinding away as well. Now, I've gotten the chance to play the game just, you know, briefly here. And I've noticed that first things first, there are different layers to the mining. As you guys can see, all of these portals will lead you towards the mining. Now, if you're a newbie and you come into the game, you start right here. An OP player could just make one little dent straight all the way down to the final area. And that can cause you to fully discover all of the layers without having to put in the work. So that's one easy way that I can become a pro. I could just have someone who's super OP, who has the best weapon in the game, come over here and dig a hole. And all I have to do is just jump down that rabbit hole and fall all the way down to the bottom to discover every single layer in the map. Now, there is another situation that happens, and this happens a lot in public servers some of the OP players, they feel that they are the only ones that should be entitled to all of the elements that are here in the game because they are doing the most work digging the holes. But I have to tell people all the time, and these are just random people, I honestly don't know them, but they always say this to me, yo, you get out, or you didn't dig this hole, why are you in here? This is known as like a table situation everyone is invited to this table everyone has a opportunity to eat you cannot be greedy share the wealth you know what i mean this is a video game share the wealth some people will be over here at the crystal cavern and they found themselves like a nice little cave inside of the mining section where 
there's nothing but lit up ores everywhere. There's chests and, you know, secret things to discover. And those guys would siphon and just take everything away from everyone else. Now, the game is solely designed, as I mentioned, to where you can dig one little hole and basically end up all the way at the end. You know what I mean? Depending on how strong you are. Like, if I were to dig straight through here, I can fall all the way down to the Crystal Cavern. And I can literally fall where those OP players are digging at right now. So if you guys look at this server here, we got Toe Muncher and Drake Craft. I can literally just jump down to where they are and start mining there. And they're probably going to say, you know what, what are you doing here, skills? This is just an example. Drake Craft is not mean, and I don't even know who Toe Muncher is. But I'm just putting this, you know, as an example. They can say something like this to me, you know, like, you're a noob. You don't belong down here. Why are you even touching this stuff? You know, the game just literally is designed this way. You can literally just fall down the hole and just discover any layer in the map. But there is also a plus side to the discovery. So even if you discover the final area, if your weapon is not strong enough to mine there, you have no purpose of being there. So now you're going to have to resurface. Speaking of the surface... They have the cell here, and then they also have the surface button here. So this brings you back up to spawn, just in case you were wondering how do you actually get back up here. You don't have to reset your character. And there's also some surface uh, buttons inside of these layers. Now, seeing the outside of each portal, you can see that there's like this little symbols above them, almost like emoji signs, basically. And you can see that... The Crystal Cavern has a chest. The Underworld has a chest. Then you have this one here with a dollar sign. This is where your shops are located. So, as you can see, there's two shops here. There's a Frozen Depth shop, and then there's one over here at the Molten Core. That's basically where you guys will be farming for your weapons. And then there's a shop for uh, this spawn world as well. Now, you can only maximize your weapons here... If you're a new player, you know what I mean? You're only up here. You're only going to get the weapons that are basically designed to fit this surface. But once you start to develop in a game, you're going to make your way down to the frozen depths. And that's where you guys will get better backpacks and better weapons. Now, when I first joined the game, when it released, this area was not over here. It was sort of blocked off. But now we can actually go over here. And there is something coming soon, which is a rocket. And I'm guaranteeing now that this is going to be a rocket that's going to teleport us to a different world. And that would be really, really cool. You can see that the map design is still almost, you know, very familiar to like Bubblegum Simulator because this is literally coming from the same developers and everything like that. Um, there's pets over there. And I'll explain the pet situation in a second. So they added this gem enchant over here. So, um... As you guys can see to the left hand side of your screen, you have your currency in coins and then you have your currency in gems. Now, if you come over here to the gem enchant, you can actually use this. And this is basically like player upgrades in the game. So you have hatching speed, you have companionship, which is giving you guys more pets equipped. You have pet storage, you have Midas touch in which this increases the value of the items that you guys are selling. You have cheaper rebirths, and then you have the permanent layers. Now, what I would recommend you guys to work on, even though I'm not a pro player, but since I've been playing, I would recommend that you guys work on getting cheaper rebirths, so that way it doesn't cost as many coins as you know it would normally, basically, for you to rebirth. That's the first thing that I started working on. Then the second thing would be Midas Touch, increasing the amount of things that you guys are basically selling, giving you more money, helping you reach your rebirth goal a whole lot faster. And then the third thing would be permanent layers. Like I said, an OP player can actually get this done for you in two seconds, but let's just say you don't want to deal with those players. You know what I mean? You can permanently unlock all the layers here for you. So that's an option as something that I would say you should work on. That's like a third option. So cheaper rebirths will be first, Midas Touch will be second, and then permanent layers will be third. 
Now, the last couple of things that I would recommend you guys work on so that way you don't waste your um, gems here is pet storage and hatching speed. Those are basically two of the most useless things in the game. Companionship is going to be the most hardest thing for a lot of people because look at how much just equipping one extra pet is going to cost you 4,000. So however many pets they allow you to equip in a game, it's just going to keep rising and rising in the gem values over there. All right. So now let's go over and talk about the pets. So that situation is a little weird for me. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. It's a little strange. The pets over here is like, um, they have statistical stats with multipliers, but it's strange when they level up. It seems like the duration for the pets actually change. So let me show you guys inside of my inventory here. And I'm actually working on completing my pet index. And I'll explain why I'm working so hard on the pet index. So take a look at this legendary here. This is the uh, Phantom. This is a normal legendary, by the way. So you can see the stats here. It has plus 202 in uh, mining. So that's an adder and not a multiplier. And then you have a multiplier here for the coins times 104. But then there's this like cooldown symbol here or like a timer. It has 28.9. And it's weird because this is increasing instead of like decreasing in time. Whereas this one here is an epic. You have 20.5. Then you have this infernal dragon. This is a epic as well. 21. And then you compare them to some of these other ones here. So here's a level two imp 20.5. Then here's a regular imp 20. So why is the timer going up? That is so strange to me. Um, but we did just uh, hatch an epic here, the Flame Wisp. So um, I was thinking about considering giving this levels here, but the coins is not very great. And look at the timer, 18 right there. So I don't understand how that works. Now, speaking of legendaries, I've hatched a total of five legendaries in this game without any luck boosters. So that's already a positive sign for me. So let's count them out here. We got the Phantom, and those are the stats right there. We have the Dark Dragon, and that's the stats for the Dark Dragon right there. We have a Shiny Werewolf. We have the Frost Wisp here. So I recently had this equipped, so that's why this one has some levels on it. Um, let's see, where is the other legendary that we got? The King Penguin. This one is one of my favorite legendaries. It just looks like it's a golden legendary or shiny legendary, but honestly, it's just a normal King Penguin. <laughs> and then we have um, the normal dragon here. And that is all of the legendaries that I hatched, a total of five. Now, I do want to say when I started out the game, ladies and gentlemen, I did waste some Robux on just one pet. I didn't buy any game passes or anything like that, but I did spend Robux to get a Robux Panda. And this was just basically a panda that was coming from the first egg. So it was a waste of Robux, but it was a great jump start nonetheless. Once you guys start discovering and hatching some other eggs here in the game, then you'll start to see that these pets are actually worth it. You know what I mean? And they get stronger and stronger by the egg. So that's a good sign. Now, when it comes down to the ores, ladies and gentlemen, as you guys can see, once you start collecting ores in the map, um, whether it's dirt or sapphire or diamond or fire shards or some green emeralds, Every time you mine one of those things, they come straight to your inventory and you have an option, which is kind of weird, but you have an option to sell them or to actually save them and use them over here at the forge. So this is the forge area here, and this is where you guys would basically be using your elements that you guys are discovering to, um, to basically make pets shiny. So as you guys see right here, um, this is going to cost me five fire shards. So you have to fill up all of these uh, little squares here. So basically some would require maybe like five pets at max. And then some would require more than five. 
Whereas this one here, this one's requiring three, six, nine crystal bats, and we don't have nine of those crystal bats. So that means we're going to have to go back, hatch more, and then we also need the shards. So every time you guys are selling, basically, you're selling everything in your inventory. So it kind of, you know, defeats the whole purpose of us mining if we have to instantly sell it. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but yeah, that's pretty much what I gathered up in the time that I have been playing. Also, we have leaderboards over here, which is the most ridiculous leaderboards I have ever seen. Look at the top three players here. How do they have that many rebirths, bro? That literally makes no sense whatsoever. Like scrolling this entire leaderboard, there's like literally no chance for anyone to get on here. And this is almost absurd. This is just basically telling you guys like you either have to pay to win or you need early basically access to the game. So some YouTubers, I probably don't know who they are in this game, but they probably gotten, you know, some easy access here. Some developer friends probably got some early access. And that's how these guys are here on this leaderboard, because this makes no sense. 3000 plus rebirths already. Then you have over here the top blocks mined. So we have about 21 billion blocks mined, which is insane, bro. Now, I could see a familiar name on here. We got uh, GT Maze. I used to um, record his games, but he kind of like, he kind of went left field with some of his games. So I just kind of just gave up and just stopped. But he's not a bad guy. You know what I mean? But he's literally up here. He's a dev. And he has his own game. So <laughs> you know how that goes. Like I said, some of these guys probably had early access. All right. Now to talk about the eggs once more. So if you go over here to your index, ladies and gentlemen, every time you complete a egg, basically you got all of the pets in that egg, you get a small gift. So that's why I'm going backwards and focusing on this right now. And people are laughing at me because I don't have as many rebirths. Um, I'm not as strong. And you know what I mean? You guys are laughing at me, but look at what's happening here. I'm slowly becoming a pro at my own pace. So I'm working backwards, getting every pet here, getting all of the accolades and the rewards and the achievements and stuff like that. While you guys are just mining away and rebirthing and, you know, laughing at skills for being trash at the game. But don't worry. Karma comes around. OK, so take a look at this. Like I'm literally going backwards and completing each and every egg, bro. It's literally insane. Now, some of these eggs are going to get very, very hard to hatch because they are very, very expensive. And there is secrets in the game as well. So let's take a look at the last two eggs. So as you guys can see right now, we need to work on the volcanic egg, which is going to cost me 4.5 million per hatch. Then we have the underworld egg, which is 10 million per hatch. And then we have the crystal, which is like, I think, 30 or 40 mil a hatch. So as you can see, it starts to get more and more pricier, but the pets get more and more juicier. So there's two different legendaries here in the volcanic. There is three legendaries here in the underworld egg and a secret. And then if you look over here at the crystal, there's also, I want to say three legendaries plus a secret. I don't think there's mythical pets in the game. I think after a legendary, it's just basically secret. Now, not only do you need to complete the normal index, but you also need to complete the shiny index as well. So there is chances you guys can hatch shinies or you can craft them over here at the forge to make them shiny. So um, I've been lucky to hatch some of these guys as shinies and I've been auto deleting them basically. <laughs> the only thing I legit made shiny was this werewolf. <laughs> But everything else that you guys are seeing, as far as my discovery goes, um, you know, I've basically hatched it. So that's, you know, pretty cool. Um, now that we talked about the pet eggs and the uh, index and the achievements and everything like that, let's take a look at our next rebirth. So our fourth rebirth is going to cost $1.28 Now, here's what you guys get for rebirths. 
the rewards change every single time. Sometimes it'll be, you know, gems and sometimes it'll be coins, but there's always going to be a stupid pointless crate. Now let's talk about the crates here. So when you guys uh, basically discover crates here, this is what's in your crates. Skins, skins for your weapons and for your backpack. So you can take a look at my chainsaw that originally was not the skin there but now i have on this legendary gold skin and it kind of goes with my outfit and it looks pretty cool but it serves no other purpose but the ex you know the aesthetics of it literally it's just a skin to make you look cool it has no multipliers no adders no purpose of existence and yet they continuously give us a whole bunch of these and they expect us to just open them up and just be like, oh, wow, we got a legendary skin. Like, look at this. I got this from Rebirthing, by the way. So you guys probably already have this first one here. But look, it has nothing, literally nothing. So don't waste your time purchasing crates in the game unless you're one of those players that have to have every skin. You know what I mean? But I would focus on just discovering your pets so that way you guys can get the rewards from the index and everything like that. Um, over here, you have where your gear is stored. So every time you purchase something, you can see what you previously purchased. And you can basically cycle through these things and switch them around whenever you want. So right now, we're currently on this molten saw and we have the enhanced canister backpack. And then we have explosives in the game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, explosives basically work like a secondary weapon. So if you guys have ever played like Arsenal or Big Paintball, basically those are your primary and secondary weapons. So this would be my primary right here, this chainsaw, and then my secondary would be this nuke here. Now you can actually use the nuke to, um, you know, to blow up the mine here. And some of these things, they do make like a certain like blast radius, but most of the time it's just a waste of money. Like I legit paid like, what did I pay? Two, two million for this nuke. And if you take the nuke down to the crystal caverns, it's not doing anything down here. So it's just literally a waste of money. What I would do is just basically stay with your primary weapon save up so that way you guys can get stronger and stronger weapons and i know it sounds weird to take tips from a newbie but that's basically what i gathered up here now let me go over to each and every uh portal here just to show you guys what is what in here so we got a coin chest right here now this is the cheapest and also the fastest respawning chest as you can see this thing spawns every minute and it's going to be a guaranteed one million coins for me now, as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff lit up. You got little fossils here. Now, you can choose to sell those, or as I mentioned, you can save them up for uh, crafting at the forge. Now, um, when you are gathering up all of these elements here, you may notice that they have a different value. So this is only worth one, whereas this stone here, seven. You know what I mean? So that's the density. That's basically why you see different numbers. In case you were wondering, look at this. One, then the stone here, seven. But you could also see that these have different values as well. Whereas the stone is not really giving you much. But where this fossil, that's where the money is. So that's basically what you guys want to do. You want to collect that stuff. But I will tell you though, every... Every place you're going to be visiting, this stuff is going to get more and more grand. So now we sell this. Look at that. We got 59K just off of those skeleton bones. Now we're back at the surface. And let's go to the frozen depths here. So here in the frozen depths, you have the two eggs for this area. The ice egg and then the arctic egg. You can see that there is some other elements here as well. Emerald. Emerald. And then emerald. And then look at this. Ice. See that? Then there's gold over here. Let's go ahead and take that. And there's more stuff over here. You have silver. So let's take a couple of those. Silver. Emerald. More silver in between there. And take that. Gold up there. 
some of these you got to get very, very close to. That over there. There's actually a couple right here at the surface. So let's take those. And as you guys can see, this chainsaw is just plowing through because these areas are the easiest in the game. So let me just go ahead and get a couple more pieces here. And get that from over there. These two over here. Just like that. And then we go ahead and sell that. So now we got 1.1 million from just selling all of that right there. And like I said, you have your shops here. So this is where you guys can get uh, more weapons and more backpack space. Because you're coming from the spawn world. So now let's go to Gloomy. And let's see what we got over here. So we got a mega chest. This is going to give you guys more coins. So we got 18.4 million right there. So just that fast. Then we have the uh, dark egg over here. And of course you have more minerals and you know stuff to discover here. So here's some sapphire pieces. Let's go ahead and get that. Now when you guys are using your weapons here, it's actually a hold and click. It's not just a point and click. You know what I mean? So if I were to just point, you know what I mean, like this, you're just doing that. Basically, and that's not doing nothing. You literally have to hold and click it. So there's no way to like officially like auto click this game. And if you guys discover a way, you know, comment down below and try to help the rest of the community out. Let's go ahead and get some more of these emeralds here. Let's go ahead and get that one and let's sell. We got 810k from that. That wasn't really much of a gather, but I just wanted to just basically show you. All right, now we're going to go over to the molten core. So now we have another shop, we have an egg over here, and then we have all of this wondrous area to explore. See, as you guys can see, the other two guys that are here in the server, whoa, the server filled up. But the other people that were here, basically, um, you can see that no one has made it here yet. You know, everyone has discovered all of the layers, so they instantly just go to the best layer. So sometimes this is the perfect time for you to come to a certain layer and really just start exploring. So you can see this is getting more and more dense here, more and more stronger to mine. So we have deep stone, we have mithril there, and we have some other elements in here as well, but I don't see anything that is surfaced. So I might have to start digging my way here, but this is where you guys will start to see fire shards unobtainium there are different things here so i got 3.5 million right there we have some crystals i think this is diamond yep let's go ahead and get that we have another diamond back here if we can just get back here there we go let's go ahead oh this is mithril okay so mithril and diamond they kind of look almost similar to each other because of the way they shine and twinkle you know what i mean their color scheme is almost the same so notice here, ladies and gentlemen, you have a shop and you have surface, and then there is a cell all the way over here. So now we got 4.5 mil just for getting those two right there, which is really, really cool. Now let's teleport to the underworld. Okay, so now we have a molten chest. Look at that, 113.4 million. So you can instantly just gain so many millions, but look at the timer here now. This chest is collectible every five hours, and this is your last money chest. The last chest, which is at Crystal Cavern, that's a gem chest, and that's going to be very helpful. Now, look at this molten stone, 2,000 in its density. So it, that takes a little bit of time. Then we have some mithril here, so let's go ahead and collect those. We got diamond here. We have more mithril here, so let's go ahead and collect that. Collect some more molten stone. We got to hold that for a little bit, and there is our first fire shard piece. And look at how much you can make just off of that one fire shard piece. So as I mentioned, you go to your items, everything is stored here. So if you go to the ores, you can see how much you have collected so far. So we got diamond, two mithril one fire shard and then we got about 4000 molted stone there so we have the option like i mentioned to save it 
and craft at the forge or we can sell it instantly. So let's go ahead and get this diamond here. We got the Trinity here. We got Mithril, diamond, and then we got another diamond there. Let's get some stone while we're at it. There we go. All right. So now let's go over here and sell that. So we got 20.2 million just off of that. Let me go ahead and get that diamond. And let me sell that. So we got 1.5 right there. Look at how much you get just by, you know, mining in this area. Just one thing. So here's the egg. As I mentioned, it costs 10 mil. And it starts to get pricier and pricier. Now we're going to visit the last area. And this is the Crystal Cavern. This is basically where everyone is right now. So gem chest here, and that's collectible every five hours. And as you guys saw, we probably got like 200 gems. And, you know, it's very helpful, but it's not a lot. You know what I mean? Now, there are game passes in the game. You guys can go over here to the shop. So let's take a look here. Not only do we have game passes, but we do have uh, exclusive pets here. So every week there's going to be different pets. So as you guys can see, these are legendaries that I already hatched. But now they're here in the exclusive shop to give you guys an instant boost if you're new to the game. So 89 Robux is the cheapest. And then the most expensive is going to be this guy here, the Infernal Revenant. Now, I can actually hatch this, but it's going to take a long time for me to hatch this. So if I wanted to use Robux and get it instantly, you can get it and it will count towards your um, index. So you don't necessarily have to discover everything. You can actually just buy it or when trade comes out, which is probably the next update, you can probably get pets traded to you and that could still count towards your index, meaning you won't have to actually get it yourself. So that's a good thing. Okay. So aside from the uh, featured exclusives here, we also have a featured egg. So it's a limited time situation. This is only around for a week. They are introducing a Dominus egg. It says, get a legendary Dominus pet when purchased. All pets have the same chance and the same stats. So they're just color coded here, but they all serve the same purpose, same stats. Nothing changes, nothing spectacular about the red one or the yellow one or the green one and the orange one. They all do the same thing naturally. So that's, you know, that's a good thing to know, but it makes you probably not want to buy it. You know what I mean? All right. Taking a look at the game passes here. So you have VIP. As a VIP player, this is what you guys are getting. You get 50% more coins, 50% more XP, and a special player title for 349 Robux. You have stronger pickaxe here doubles the strength of any tool you have so this is actually a very interesting game pass this could work both towards free in-game swords and also those that purchase the omega scythe just imagine twice the strength you're going to be plowing through the entire map the infinite backpack this is one that i am recommending to everyone even if you don't have robux or even if you're against the whole you know pay to win sort of situation infinite backpack that means you won't have to purchase any backpacks you can save coins for farming purposes more pets this allows you to equip plus four pets so extra pets giving you more strength making you plow through the game a whole lot faster but 1000 robux is a lot and that's a lot for a lot of players you know what i mean some people don't have the luxury of owning 1000 robux in their personal accounts Next, we have some storage here. So this is just giving you guys more pets you can hold in your inventory. Um, teleportation, you can teleport instantly to anywhere in the map. But, you know, you don't really need a teleporter when you can just resurface and then just go to the portal. So this is kind of a useless uh, game pass here. It costs 174 Robux. That is a randomized number, by the way. Uh, triple hatch, which is something that I would recommend, but triple hatch, you know, for me in simulators, I feel like this should be given for free. It should not be a chargeable option, but they do it anyway in simulators and they make you pay this much every single time. If it's not 749, it's 799, but it does help you discover pets a whole lot faster because you're able to hatch 
three at a time as opposed to singly hatching one at a time. Lucky Game Pass, that's useful for discovering the legendaries and the secrets in this game. Then you have two times the gems, which is going to be helpful for rebirths and the uh, gem enchant shop. Then you have the Omega Scythe, the best Robux weapon in the game. An overpower scythe with high mining power and extreme speed. So this thing costs 3,500 in Robux. And then you have this uh, explosive here, the Omega Nuke. And this does damage, devastating amounts of damage damage <laughs> i love how they put that there so it's making you kind of want to buy this because you want to see that devastating amount of damage um but 549 is the asking price right there so i think that might end up being worth it i haven't seen anyone use it yet all i've seen people using was the omega scythe and i've heard good things about it but right about now I'm on the fence here because if I end up getting this somewhere down the line, is there going to be another Robux weapon introduced that's going to be stronger? You know, what if they put like a Thanos siphon here or something like that, or a Thanos chainsaw, something Thanos related to like a glove with infinity gemstones and stuff like that? Because it's a mining game, it wouldn't make sense for them to add a Thanos glove. Um, but, you know, I'm worried about wasting money on this. And then they bring something out that's better. Um, and then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can instantly buy currency in the game. So you got coins here, and the cheapest is 10 Robux. And then you can instantly buy gems as well. So the cheapest here is uh, 10 Robux as well. This will only get you 50, though. And um, there seems to be no boosters here in the game, which is kind of weird because it's a simulator. You think they would have boosts for like two times the coins, two times the gems, you know, two times the damage, but they actually don't have that. Um, and the next thing I want to talk about, which is going to be the last thing here we have is the options. You guys can play around with some buttons in here. So you can control the volume of the game. You can turn on and off the music, the sound effects, the visuals here. You can scale down the UI. So if you are on a low end device, meaning you're on mobile, you might be lagging and stuff because all of the stuff that's going on in the map. So go ahead and turn some of that stuff down. And then, of course, you have low detail mode as well. So this will reduce the glare effect of the game. And then you have the hide your pets. So basically, my pets are being hidden. But if we turn it off, you can see my pets once again. So there they are. And they look really awesome. Now, my favorite pet is the Frost Wisp. I'm going to equip that, and that's going to be the end of this video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my first video here in Mining Simulator 2. If you want to see more, comment down below. And of course, don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you're new watching for the very first time and hit the like button on this video. So I'm going to unequip this just for a second just to show you why this is my favorite um, pet in the entire discovery of pets that I discovered. Look at how awesome that guy looks, bro. As compared to the Phantom and the Inferno Dragon, he has this little blue aura effect, and it's just really working. It really looks awesome. And then when you look at it in first person, bro, that's sick. Look at it's basically like deteriorating off of its body, and it's really it's really dope. Then when you look at these, it's just okay. They're cool, you know. It's a it's a fandom or you know a person with like a dominus and wings on there and that's a dragon you know the wings are kind of goldish but you know they have no other aspect to them where this one here you would have thought this was a exclusive pet look at how awesome it looks and then when you go inside of the cave this thing lights up which is really really dope i think there's a brother to this frost wisp let me go ahead and check out what the brother is looking like, the Flame Wisp. So let's go ahead and unequip that guy and equip the brother. Let's see if he has the same effect. And it does. That is so dope. <laughs> that is so freaking dope, bro. But anyway, guys, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.